Hey guys, it's Al from Altruistic Channel. So I actually have been tasked with a very interesting assignment, if you will. Um, let me turn my video down. Um, so a major shift has just occurred. And a lot of people that have been amongst you are about to be catapulted up. And I don't think that all of them are as aware as some of us are. So I've been feeling this since I guess uh, I'm supposed to share my story. So everybody get warm and toasty. I'm not going to do that. There are things changing around you on a daily basis that many of you may not be conscious of, and then some of you may be conscious of. Those of you, like I've said on the Ascension Path, are ascending, and a lot of you are going through the awakening process. The majority of people are not able to kind of silence it. They, they are being thrown into it by the divine um, as we make this sacred transition to sacred planet status for Gaia. And a lot of things are going to change. The poles may shift. There's a whole of chaos. It's all, there's all these variables at play. But the one thing that I want to say is that there are... There are a lot of us on the planet that are here on purpose. In fact, everybody, on, I know you don't believe this, but everybody on the planet chose to be here during this crucial time of the super, of the conscious evolution to jump from consciousness, uh, individual consciousness, back to a, a group consciousness, which would be the super conscious. And all of us are, I put it like this, all of us are like lights on a, a, on a chain of Christmas lights. I can't remember who, I got this from somebody, and I'm sorry, I can't remember. It's like a, a, a light string. And all the bulbs on the light are all individual bulbs, but they're all part of the same chain. A lot of lights, oh, sorry, not a lot, a few lights, that one favorite chain that we all have on our tree, that is the one that's either multicolored and the only one that you have that goes almost the whole way of the tree, but not really, so you put it in the middle and you hide it and you blink, or it's set to motion or to music, and it's your favorite strand, but you always forget for whatever reason, or you can't afford to get a new strand, it's always your favorite. It's it's not necessarily favorite consciously, but it's just like you put it always on your tree because it's the one thing that sparkles. The chain itself doesn't know that it sparkles. It has no idea that it has any special significance whatsoever. And each bulb, it has to work in unison for all of this to transpire properly. In order for the tree to do it, just right for you. And so, this transition that the world is going to has so many layers to it. Everyone on the planet wants to be here true. Everybody has to go through this true, but not everybody's going to make it true. It, it, it's a personal decision, free will, reign supreme. Mystics are still mystics, psychics are still psychics. People still have gifts. People can sing, people can act, people can draw, people can do all sorts of shit. But there's a string in the tree of life that is specifically God or source of creation's favorite string because it's made of anomalies. It has no tact in one regard and complete honesty in another one. It has the gift of music, but no ability to speak. It is autistic, but still a brainiac. It can think in the form of calculus, but it cannot speak in trigonometry. It can speak in English, but cannot speak in any other language, try as you may. It can do poetry, but it cannot connect in a physical way. It can be love and hate. It can be everything in a hodgepodge of dichotomy. And it's this, it's this weird string. But to the viewer, to the person looking at the tree, to the observer, casual observer, it is their favorite tree, part of the tree. It twinkles or it plays music or there's a banjo with a guy going, you got a pretty mouth. The hick that really likes that shit really loves that one strand. It's going to depend on your point of view. But the strand, again, does not know that it's made up of all these hodgepodge things. It 
doesn't understand, it's not self-aware enough to understand why it's special. And in fact, their entire existence of this tree has made it feel so isolated and, 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 and not cared about. It's been overlooked because the rest of the tree is all about how beautiful white light it is and how, how it has no imperfection, how it, it, it's just solid and it just feeds beautifully. And so the strand itself, which is small, and full of anomaly and full of weird people, uh, things like weird aspects of the personality of the tree. God's favorite part, but would never know it because the strand has been so put upon and so overlooked. I should say not put upon, but overlooked by the tree that it does not understand that the world viewer is looking at them from a different lens. And it does not, it is not self aware enough to understand how it shines or what brilliance it has because to it it is the bastard child of a perfect existence and as it twinkles it finds it faulty it doesn't see that it is made of beautiful harmony in a sequential order it doesn't hear it only sees and so it sees itself in bark and this huge white beautiful glowing tree after the christmas holidays with its presence all around you and rejoice and singing but it only sees that it is stand alone with just a few little people, like few little lights. And it's just like, what the fuck am I doing here? Why am I here? Why am I suffering this? The other ones are beaming. And that strand is coming to life. And that strand is finally getting its voice. They have, I call it the elders. There aren't many of us. And you're coming into a self-awareness. I think Jamila put it best. I think I'm going to just give a straight out shout out to my girl, so Jamila. A minute with Jamila. Um, because she downloaded it exactly the way that I was getting part of it. But she, like, went a whole different. I mean, she's a full-on, full psychic. Like, this girl has got a game. But she's like, the shit. She's the real thing. Opal. Uh, Natalie Opal did something where she mentioned it in a roundabout way. She did it with the wasp. There was a cancer episode that Opal did where she said, cancer. The thing about wasps is that no matter how short of time it's spent in its house, as long as it's gotten to any part of building it, it will always know its way home. And then Natalie, I forgot what she was, she was talking about judgment. That must have been September. Like right at the tail end of August, September, or September, October. Let me put it this way: between September and November, your life was fucking turned upside fucking down. Jamila nailed on the head. I lost everything. I lost it all. It is the self awareness process that you had to endure, and this is how you know if I'm speaking to you as far as the elders. And those of you who are watching from outside of it that are going to hate. This strand has existed on that tree for about 50 fucking years. Hating itself, feeling insecure, being overlooked, never being part of the community around it, always being put upon. Um, in terms of human existence, they have been raped by their parents. They have been in cults. They have been tortured. They have been mutilated. They have been raped. They have been sodomized against their will. They have been to prison for things they did not do. They have been a myriad of inhumane things have happened to these people and they are the purest of light despite it all i went through a phase and this is where i'm going to go into my story because what's about to happen is the strand is going to get nothing but more strands and it will overcome the once white tree that will still be white and bright but on the exterior it will be now surrounded by all of these twinkling musical lights and it's going to be seeming like it's overtaking the tree, but it's just an additional strand. It's a second strand. That's all that's happening. But to that strand, the world is about to blow the fuck up for them in a way that I cannot explain. It already happened. This is why I'm having trouble with this particular post. It's because the shift happened today. It happened about an hour ago. To the point where I was being visited by something, and everything in my house kept shifting. I'm like, what is going on? And I finally got up right before here and I realized, oh my god, shit, that didn't happen. It's a physical uh, verification in my life that it, 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 it switched. The 
Grant doesn't know that it's special for you. And it's about to be seen probably for the first time in their full existence. They may have had moderate success or they may have somehow made it in some specific sect of their life, but they are about to wake up. They're going to be flipped. It's about to flip. It flips on me. And I can feel it. It's really weird. Because I'm still, okay, let me just go into my story. So, the reason I'm going to tell you the story is not because I'm going to, woe is me, victimization, bullshit. It's because I'm I'm one of these people. But I have a different task. I'm leading an edge of just helping people kind of come to grips with what they think is happening and saying what they can't say at the time because I don't feel, like, I really don't care what anybody thinks about them. Anybody who knows me knows I can give a flying fuck. Having said that, this group does not know that they're special. In fact, they have spent their entire life being told that they are anything but special. They have been orphans in orphanages, again, raped, sodomized, all sorts of horrible shit that you could never exist and survive. These people have had to paste their teeth in. They have had to do things that they would never, they have had to sell their bodies to survive. They have been drug addicts and died. They have come, these people have survived shit that you could never survive because they are what is referred to as what we call sex. Every bill is always paid. And you're about to get paid. And everyone around you is going to hate your fucking guts. Life has never been fair to you. Life has never, ever, ever been fair to you. But you have gotten it up every single time. Every time that someone kicked you when you were on the ground. And they kicked you in the head a second time. And then they beat your face down again. Because some of you have gone through this. When you've been gay bashed. Or you have been uh, raped. Or when you have been... I mean, it's a... Think Oprah Winfrey's early life and just some of the shit that she went through that she talks about as though nothing, but it's something. But it something that you don't wear as a victimization. You wear it as a badge of honor. You wear it as, I did it. It is what it is. It doesn't mean anything. It's about to mean something. In the non-egoish way, because in order to, to get what's about to happen to you, your, your ego would have died and you would have gone through the agony of what that was like. It sucked. It was horrible. But I'm being told to share my story. The reason I'm sharing this is because at the end of the day, the strand that is now coming to light in full glory and is about to get the second strand is essentially becoming union. And there are a bunch of sacred things that are about to play out that are God-given things. It is their destiny. It is their purpose. Jamila said it best, and so did uh, Natalie. This is something that is outside of their control. They have no power in this. Uh, Chandler, I got to give a shout out to because Chandler, I couldn't even, if, I don't know what's going on over there because I haven't seen you in a while. But these tasks that we are being given are not easy tasks. They are very hard to put into words because a lot of people will not understand it and it puts us on the firing line. Luckily for you, don't care. Do not care. And here's why. I was born in Louisiana in 1970s. And I was born to a single Spanish mother who was very English speaking, all that stuff. She's documented as illegal, but still in Louisiana. My name is Alvaro Arvalo, to which became Elvira because these people say instead of, uh, they call Chateau an estate. I'm like, it's a fucking, it's the same thing. A Chateau is an estate. Like, why are we calling it Chateau estates? And then it'll be like, you know, um, Burgundy instead of Burgundy. It's like that kind of, so I was born, and I love, I love being from Louisiana, but let's face it, y'all, we say some fucked up shit sometimes, and it's, it's cuckoo funny to me, it's just cuckoo funny. But it, it, it depicts a picture of what it was like for my ass to be born into this world, and I was white, I'm Spanish, I was white, this tan is earned, I earned this shit, this is like every summer, me half naked on the fucking beach, like, I even burned my balls trying to get this shit to start. Because I moved to California, California is forbidden to be, you know, like Spanish. You have to be back Mexican. You got to be essay and all that shit. Fuck that. Anyway, the moral story is so that's what the early life. At about seven, I got raped by a dude who literally emulated Jesus Christ. 
That was his MO, how he got into the little boy's pants. Is that he literally looked like that 70s picture with God in the green V-neck shirt with the thing and the, the hair. And that's how he fucked me. Fucked my head up. Sent me spiraling. It really fucked my head up. Because not only did I not have a father figure, but my mother was in, un, she was inconsolable with the fact that she had let this happen. It was the one day something happened that, she, that no one could take care of me. It was the one fucking day of our entire lives that my mother hated herself for. And I couldn't be around her after that because I, I felt so It wasn't me, but I, I mean, that's what I was going through. And so he not only took that, but he took my, my faith. He looked like Jesus. I couldn't be Catholic anymore. I couldn't believe it. And so my grandmother and I became distant. And I stopped going to church. And I was in the middle of catechism. I stopped doing everything. Every my life just came crashing. I was a step back. I think I finally came back as far as consciousness when I was about nine and a half, just in time to flunk the fifth grade. Because I'd never, I, so out of it, I didn't understand what the fuck was going on. All I knew is that I had done something wrong and I was trying to figure it all out. And it's not a big deal. It, it is what it is. It happens to other people. The fact is, it was by Jesus, and that's what fucked my head up. And so I could not speak to God anymore. And I was born as, I, I knew I was chosen. I, I had Dobermans that were not my dogs that would show up at my house to walk me to nursery school. Did you not? Don't know who those dogs belong to. They did it for about two years. I guess the family moved away or something like that. Show up at the doorway. Even, because my mom, we, we, could, we had a fucking limo that would, for my mom's words, that would take me to, to nursery school under normal circumstances because her, her, her boss didn't care and he loved me. So I got the limo. And so I was a little fucking kid, Spanish-American in Louisiana that nobody could pronounce my name. So luckily it went to Al real fast. Um, got fucking raped by Jesus. But I was going in a limo, you know, and, but these dogs would show up on days when we weren't going to take the limo. They were never there when the car would be there. It was always when it wasn't. It was like some sort of protection thing. Weird. So I failed in fifth grade, and it wasn't the kids that made fun of me. It was their parents. And it set me up in a weird way mentally where I could never trust adults ever again. And there's some other stuff that happened there. And my mom imploded. My grandmother was so overprotective, but I had become such a nightmare. Once you get sodomized that way, and once you, you go through the hell that you go through, you can't be normal again. I just was lashing out left and right. Because I, all I saw was the distance even further from my mom. My mom and I were never close. My mom, my mother said that she had a dream about me where I came to her before I was born. I was in her body. And I introduced myself, and I told her what my name was. I apparently chose Alma for some reason. And so she was always a little bit taken back by me. And it wasn't that she didn't like me. There's something weird about the way I was born. There are secrets there that are going to be revealed, and I already know what they are, but I'm going to let it play out, and they're not nice. It is what it is, and life just goes on. So it was the parents that, that, that took it out on me that I didn't pass the fifth grade. So the next year, my mother decided to move out of nowhere, and we moved to Canada. Canada, bro. Don't know where that fucking white honky shit came from, but yeah, I take it back. Canada, bro. Um, it's like a bunch of wicked shit. It's like, you're not black. You let black people have suffered. They can let black people be black people. Y'all be white. How's that? Why the fuck is you? you? Like, I'm, I'm getting in a whole bunch of trouble for that. But I'm serious. Like, wicked shit. Fuck y'all. Like, that's, it's hard enough being a minority. Just pick your own shit. Stop fucking with other people's shit. You know, Iggy Azalea is a good example of someone who actually is, like, she's a, she's a fucking white thug. Like, I can't hate on her. But, like, you know, like, I'm getting on a tangent. Okay, fine. Okay, this is why it's hard to do these downloads, because it can trigger you in other ways. And so that's part of the element of me. You just gotta know it, acknowledge it, and just keep it, don't edit it out. So, so the next year when I went to the new school, it was an all white school. And I had never been to an all white school. I'd always been into like a, a mixed school, because I went to McDonald's and the French Quarter, literally, up until this point. So there were black kids. Spanish kid, well, okay, there was, like, one other Spanish kid, and they were, like, I think, like, a Honduran, Honduras, from Honduras, or were they Cuban? It was Cuban, Cuban or Honduras, and I don't know why, I can't remember, but it, 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 one other fucking kid, right? It was a little girl, and I think she was, like, four grades ahead of me, so that's probably, I was the only one. 
And so I was surrounded by a bunch of white kids and stuff like that, but I had always had black friends. It was like never a big deal. My mom never said anything about it. It, it was never an issue. In the South, I never experienced racism. It wasn't until I moved to California that I experienced racism. I'm just going to put that out there for you. This blank state. Louisiana is the wrong one. We are not the people you think we are just because we're... White people, black people, Hispanic people, whoever the fuck you are, get pulled over by corrupt cops every fucking day. It does not matter. Down here, it's straight up ghetto, white trash, wigga, all mixed together in one big hodgepodge bullshit, and we all do just fine. It's when other people come down here to try to tell us what to do that we have the problem. In 300 fucking years, you've never seen the world do a motherfucking thing that you say that we need to do as a country. Where you go? This is who we are. So. That's who went into this all-white school. And so that personality shows up, and I'm there, and I ended up in GT. I ended up number one, and I ended up doing it without even blinking an eye because I showed up. Then we moved to California, and I dropped out of school. There was no gifted and talented. There was no honors society. It was all stuff that I'd covered two years ago. So in eighth grade in California, they were covering shit that I covered in sixth grade in Louisiana. I was bored out of my mind. Hormones were raging, I was gay, and I was fucked up because I had already hit puberty by the time I was 10 because of the rape. And so all of this was playing out, and so I ended up dropping out by 8th grade. I ended up walking down the street one day to get away from my mom, who was yelling at me, and walked right into a call. There are crimes that were committed, and I was a minor, so I can't go into specifics. But one day, I promise you, my child, you and I will have it out. This is not that day, but I'm coming for you. I guarantee you, you will pay for this. Anyway, specifically Miss Gav and Tonkos. But no one's that stupid. I don't care how pretty you are. No one's that fucking stupid. Okay, anyway, bye. All this is to say, and I'm going to leave all this in because it's very important when you do these downloads to be honest with what you're working through. Don't ever let it overcome you and don't ever let it lead you. Uh, Natalie said this best. Don't let your shadow fuck things up for you. But at the same time, don't ever lie about who you are because people see through that shit. So I'm going to leave all this in there and just let it ride. I'm also working through a lot of shadow stuff right now in sharing this, but it, God wants me to say this because all of this is in some cases barely scratching the surface of what these others, these other light strands that are about to hit have been. And I want you to really take that in what that means. So I ended up in this cult. It destroyed my soul. I ended up with no family, and my mom would eventually end up dying. All of this happened by the time I was 26. I was left by myself. My dad chose the church over me. I ended up with no money, no estate, no nothing. I was went from something to I went from hero to zero, and I went to zero in a way that skid me down to skid row. I ended up on drugs. I almost tried to kill myself twice. Um, and people can't say that I was depressed. I wasn't depressed. I was gonna fucking kill myself. It wasn't like I was like, oh, whoa, I was like, you motherfucker. You rape me with your kid. Like, I was just hating. I was the victim. It was the whole night. And to make things better, when I got to about 32, I met the love of my life who was not in love with me. I'd never known love. I'd never seen that happen. So how the fuck would I know? So I was like, okay, I'm just a walking piece of shit. By the way, still the love of my life because it was the right choice. And I, I don't need to explain this any further. Anybody who's ever been in that situation knows that love is love. And anybody who sits there and flips and says, oh, I hate my ex, then go fuck yourself. You didn't deserve the partner in the first place. Love is love. Acknowledge it. Thank it. Because otherwise you wouldn't know you're alive. So anyway, bye, guys. Moving on. Uh, it's heavy. It's heavy stuff. And the reason this is important is because... These lights that are about that just turned on are about to experience a stratosphere that others have not seen. It's a love that has not been seen before on this planet if they're getting into union with each other. It is a level of success that has not been seen before. It is intuition that has never been experienced before. These, are, I cannot say this enough. The, the psychics on YouTube are dead on. This is why I believe so heavily in Ascension is because of the fact that None of us are in contact with each other, but we're all having the exact same downloads. And it, you can't fake this shit. It's just, it is true for you or it's not. And if it's true for you, it's about, Jamila said it best, but you do not know what is about to happen. But in the process, one night on my way home, 
I um, was shot in the back of the head, execution style on the ground. And it cannot have happened because I'm still here, but yet there are about, I'd say about five minutes of life that no one, no doctor, nobody can explain to me where I went to a weird space. And in that nanosecond that I was gone, my shoes were taken off, all my jewelry and stuff were taken off of me in a nanosecond. And these motherfuckers, when I came to, were two blocks, two whole blocks down the street from where they had uh, pulled the trigger. I don't know about you, but I didn't make it. And I got sent into a Dark Knight soul. And a Dark Knight soul decided that it wasn't enough what I'd been through. And I'm not victim here, because this is all on purpose, okay? So, I had agreed to this, apparently. Because <laughs> I'm a fucked up person. Uh, I was at the time, but... It decided to send me straight into a Dark Knight soul. All of my friends turned their back on me. I became one of the pariahs of the social community. I could not talk to anybody anymore. I had been victimized for the last time. And I tried to kill myself, and I realized I couldn't. I was trapped here. And in that mental space, I was still going to work, and I started to get followed by Scientology. And so all of these things were starting to play out in a way that I cannot tell you how unhealthy it was. But I kept getting up. And I got up every day of my life, even though I prayed for death every night I went to bed. I could not understand what I did karmically that was ever worthy of what I was going through. I ended up trying to get friends to move in with me to save me on my rent because I lost my job. And then I lost my house. And then I became homeless. And I've spent the past two years rebuilding my life frame by frame, frame by frame, frame by frame. And no matter what I did, I wrote some amazing books. I wrote some, I've done some amazing art. I've done some amazing shit. And I don't think highly of myself. Used, I didn't used to. And I still don't. I'm still very humble. And I'm still very, very me. But I felt invisible. I felt cloaked. I felt like no one could see me. And it started to dawn on me as the ascension, as I started to work my ascension, that it was meant to be. That I was not meant to be seen yet. And there were other realizations that I needed to go through. For example, a legacy is not something you build for your existence that you're currently having. A legacy is what you leave behind when you're through. So it was an unreal expectation for me to expect success out of those books early on because it was for my legacy. I said that. I said, this is about my legacy. I'm not going to die the piece of shit that everybody seems to think I am. I'm not going to die the victim of a rape that, by Jesus. I'm not going to die at, because of the fact of a cult. I'm not going to die because they took all of my family away, with the exception of my aunt and my cousin who lived in Louisiana. I lived in California at the time. It took 10, 15 years before I would ever, ever have enough money to move back here. And so, I was not going to die never having been in love. I was not going to die being a victim of this. I was not going to die, blah, blah, blah. And then I died. On my birthday, July 2nd of this year, I went into what I can only describe as a coma. And I was by myself, and I ended up in the hospital. And when I was conscious, they held me down against my will and made me shit on myself and humiliated me in ways that I cannot describe. And so I ended up checking myself out against doctor's orders with the physical pain that I was going through, cramps and the whole thing. And without medication, because I checked myself out early, I came and I walked all the way home. And I got into my bed, which is at a motel. It was at a motel. Because again, I was ascending and I was going through a dark night's soul. And I wasn't aligned right. And I died. I laid down and I was crying. I fell asleep. And when I woke up, I wasn't awake. It was the sound of a horn blowing over my head. That's so loud that I, my heart stopped. And that's what woke me up. And I was on a boat. And I was in the Sea of Souls. And I'm not Catholic. I never remember. I only got to catechism. I never actually got to read the whole thing. I never knew what a Sea of Souls was. I just knew I was born at the bottom of it. And so back in the Sea of Souls, when the window breaks in this in this boat and we're flushed out my road, two people and me, two people immediately go down. And I understood what that meant. 
And so I'm basically treading water, and I kid you not, on the left side of me, a train with a bunch of white Anglo-Saxon assholes with smiley faces <laughs> go up. And I never realized I had a racial issue until that moment. I was like, you motherfuckers. And all going up to heaven. What I didn't realize is that it wasn't heaven. They were going up to judgment. And so I had to call to judgment. That's what the whole fucking horn was. And so I was dead for a good 10, 15 minutes. I'm in, I'm in this white uh, hallway, and uh, I cannot tell you what I saw there because it's not something you can describe, and it, he, she, it will look different to each of you. But I basically got the impression that I had been asked how I felt my life went. And to my surprise, I said, pretty good. I've always been honest. I've always had my integrity. I got up every time. I never was, I never not showed up for my life. Even if I didn't want to go to work, I went to work. I didn't think that I would ever be able to get out of anything. And I overcame that. And here I am. And then I got the impression that I was asked, do you have any regrets? And I said, I was about to say no. Because I was super proud of myself. It, it, not in an ego way, but like in a, all right, I'm, I'm having a conversation with, you know who? Like, ooh. I always thought that I was going to just unleash on, on it, but I didn't. It was so peaceful. And so, suddenly it dawned on me, I'd never experienced love. I'd always loved people who never loved me. And the people who loved me, I could not love. And even my own mom, I was very distant from. And it wasn't until she died that I understood the concept of love. So I'd never experienced love in the physical form. And for whatever reason, that led me, without saying a word, to reach out and try to touch this being. And it reached back for me. And there was a weird spark that hit my hand. It's like electricity. And if you can see it, it fucked up my nail. It fucked up my hand right here. And the next thing I hear is for the first time I hear the sound. And it goes <coughs> and these little tiny metallic hands just grabbed around my body and took me all the way back to my body. And I was pissed, but I was I was like, don't you say a fucking word, shithead. Don't even, it was a physical body. It was like, just come back. I made it back. And I lunged up with the, like a shock to my heart. It didn't hurt. Because here's the thing. I realized in the process, death doesn't hurt. Death is just a doorway. It's just a process. With you. But in, if you add, if you expect pain, then how can you not receive pain? But if you don't expect pain and you pray for to just transition, to just go, to be aware. All I wanted was to be aware that I was dying and I was good to go. And it happened. And it was just like that. Easy breezy, beautiful cover girl. Back out, but then I was back in the body and it jolted me. I had essentially six months to wrap everything up. Um, I was going to be able to go into wherever you go on the positive. But I had to finish the book and I had to finish a couple things where I talked to my family and said goodbye. And so a lot of my friends at the time got really random phone calls. Julie, uh, Mel, I went and visited. I, I did the best I could to rectify where I could. There were some things that I could not forgive um, a particular person. That I, I, she caused a rift between me and someone that I really found sacred. And so because of the friendship loss on that, even though it wasn't like I, it was a really bad situation, there's nothing I can do about it. And it's definitely not her fault. It was just it was just. It is what it is. He was the only one that I couldn't get to. Everybody else, I I did my best. And so, and then the people in California, I just, I didn't want to interrupt them because it would just not make any sense. So anyway, I wrapped everything up and then uh, it was supposed to end on 2020. And all of this, the actual process where I was called up to judgment was on, I believe it was September the 8th or 9th. Maybe, yeah, it was somewhere around there. Because I, now remember, I had come out of the hospital after July, and where I was, where I literally was forced to shit on myself and humiliated. So it was at the very tail end of, um, of it was the first time that this all went down. It was July, and then when I was called to judgment, when I actually was dying of the fever because it, it kept coming back. It was this weird thing where I would get good and then bad. It was ascension symptoms, but it finally it culminated. And so now we're in September, and so I spent October, November, December, literally wrapping up everything in my life putting together my canvas, trying to put all the loose ends together, going on the map of trying to find who my ancestors were, which ones I actually was in previous incarnations, picking up all the knowledge, bringing it forward, and all of this to arrive 
at January 20, uh, 2020. I wasn't coming through. I was told I was going to go on. And, but I worked my ass off because I found it interesting. I was very intrigued by this process because it made no sense to me as a science guy. It, it, it defied reason and uh, the spirituality and the whole thing that no one could ever quantify for me. I was able to quantify. And so I found it to be like this labyrinth of like really cool shit that was going on. And before I knew it, I had completely shifted my mindset. Instead of being a victim that was always surviving, which meant that I could never do anything but basically tread water. If you think only as a survivor, then you are only going to barely survive. If you can think yourself over the mountain, then you get over the mountain. If you think that you are a victim, you can always never be anything but a victim. You cannot do that. That is the law of attraction. It's a basic 101. But that's still new. Remember, guys, that wasn't around 10 years ago. This is all still new for us, and it's all new agey, and people look down on new age, even though new age is get used to it because it's not going, it's only going to get stronger. So the reason I'm telling you all this is because January first came, and I remember the moment. I'm in the middle of writing the third book. Actually, it's kind of funny, um, the final book on this stuff. And so, for well, they're saying for now, um, and I had to remember this, and that's why I'm I'm being told to share it. So. I couldn't tell anybody. I thought I was crazy. And I had been through so much. And I was uh, I was not mad about it anymore. I had got overcome the victimization mentality. But there was still a part of me that was just like, I'm not going to pull anybody into this. Along the way, I, I met the uh, uh, the person that I wish, like, if I if I was going to give it a shot with somebody and have love incarnate, it was this, this kid, this guy. Didn't love me back. Not the point. Because... It woke me up to the possibility. So even more grateful to him too. And my story is that I couldn't tell anybody. So that night rolled around. I didn't go out. I tied everything up. I had packed all my stuff. All of my stuff. My clothes were in bags. Everything was packed. So that when they came to find the body. I No one had to worry about anything. And there was no debt to pay. I would paid all my bills. Um, and that was it. And so I came. I was laying in bed. I smoked my last cigarette. I prayed and I said, okay, you know, thank you for the experience. I'm so, you know, I was grateful. I got in six months. I mean, I was called to judgment. I got the, the horn fucking killed me. And if I see that motherfucker, Gabriel, we're going to have words, baby. We're going to have words, which I'm sure he finds funny. But. And it wasn't just me. You see, the interesting part is that I was not only thinking this, but even the mixed and psychics in New Orleans were telling me, and then even my the people that I trusted here on YouTube. First day that I was called to judgment, Natalie, the reason I'm so connected to her, she got up and the first thing that she says is she goes, oh my God, I'm so sorry you were called for judgment. And she's talking to a whole group of people that are watching on YouTube. No idea who the fuck I am. But what would be the odds that the night before I had actually gone to judgment? And she said, I'm sorry, this is it. You didn't make it. And then fucking the same morning, the, the love of my life shows up and he's a Baptist. And he's listening to me tell him what happened in the dream. He goes, that wasn't a dream. You were called to judgment. That's three fucking judgment calls. So I was like, all right, that's that. So I can't. I was in bed. I smoked my last cigarette. I couldn't tell anybody. And I don't want to get anybody mixed up with me anyway. I, I couldn't tell him because I didn't want him to realize that I was dying. And, or at least that's what I thought was going to happen. And so I just went, I prayed, I said, thank you for the time. And then I just smoked my last cigarette and I closed my eyes and I was going. I cannot tell you what happened. That's for everybody who's ascending that they know what I, what happens here. But you don't know what's on the other side of this stuff. you Because it's like, a, it's a mental thing, but what is, no one can identify what being alive means anymore because it's not. There's something looking out from our eyes. It's not like we're just bodies. There's something physically inside of us. There are days that you wake up and it's sunny and it's beautiful and it's like 40 degrees though. And the next day it'll be 900 fucking degrees overcast and you're in a fucking somewhere else. And you're just like, what the fuck is going on? Because it's time is not linear. Things are weird. Things are changing. Your mentality is changing. Reality is shifting according to your creation. And so as we are morphing, our creation is changing creation. And so you, we didn't know what was going to happen. And it wasn't just me. There was a bunch of us. And so I can't tell you what happens. But the moral of the story is that is who is getting these upgrades. That is the strand that you're about to see pop the fuck up. And just 
You've never seen love like this. You've never seen experience like this. You've never seen brilliance like this. You've never seen genius like this. You've never seen. These are God's chosen because they have survived everything that I've gone through. Some of them times two. You can't fuck with these people. These people have never done anything to you. They are good souls. They are the beings that you cannot be. So if you're going to hate, hate yourself first before you come at these people. Because these people have been through hell in ways that you can't even think about. And the only reason I'm so very energized about this is because as of today, I can feel all of the energies of who these people are. And... I've seen a couple things that just I cannot explain that uh, they don't make sense to me yet per se, but they do. So to my friends and my family, you're going to say shit and you're going to be put in situations where you talk shit about me. Go with it. Feel it. Let it ride. I understand it. It is what it is. There's no other way to do it. I love you regardless of what's going to happen. I know what some of you say. If I'm being real, and if I would never say some of this, but I definitely would understand the sentiment. I would definitely understand why it's going to happen this way. But understand that these other people, this strand, these people that are coming into union, these are not people that understand that they are special. They have never known being special. They don't know that they're gifted. They don't know that they're pretty. They don't know that they have stuff. They don't know why they were chosen. They are about to get catapulted into an existence that you cannot comprehend because it has never happened before on this planet. This is a super conscious movement. It has nothing to do with being more deserving. These are just people who were chosen to suffer in ways that none of us would ever wish on our enemies. So do me a favor. Feel what you need to feel. Talk the shit you need to talk. But don't step to these people. Because instant death or karma. Not death. But it's, I don't think it's that bad. But it's like instant karma. And I'm talking about they will level your life and everyone around you. Because you're too stupid to focus on your shit. Stop focusing on them. They have paved the way for humanity. They have collectively served almost in the house of Christ for the sins of humanity and are now being blessed because they will guide and lift the rest of the planet to do the same thing. And you will all get to go through this process in your own way. But these people did it without ever knowing what was coming. You're going to see the salvation. You're going to see the reward. These people have no idea how their life is about to change until I'm just telling them right now. And right now they are sobbing. They are sobbing and sobbing and cannot breathe right now. Because they know that it's them. And they've never been seen. They have never been chosen. They have never been in love. They have never had any of these experiences. They have always been shit on. They've always been beaten. They've always been raped. They've always been... These are people that are like the Tibetan. These are people like monks. These are people who, that have never done anything to nobody. But life has continuously kicked the shit out of them. And I'm barely scratching the surface. So the reason I get to say this is because I don't care what you say about me. My dad didn't want me. I do not even have the remotely an inch of me that cares what anybody thinks of me. But I'm still starving. I'm still not able to find work. I'm still cloaked. I'm still going through the last phase of this. So please be aware that as this happens, it's going to flip us. And none of us are going to know how or how it manifests. But understand that up until the second that, they, that this wonderful shit happens for their lives, that they have been going through hell. It doesn't, it doesn't get easier. I'm still starving at least three days a week in America. I can't find food. I can't find work. It's not like I'm crying about it. It's just so you understand what God is putting the test through. Because at the end of the day... Whatever this reward that I'm getting or they're getting or we're getting and that you guys are going to get in your time after you do the work is not going to be anywhere nearly as bad as what I went through or what they went through. So just do me a favor. Be solid. You do you. But when they show up, acknowledge why they get to be there and then talk all the shit you want. 
But be careful. Do not put any energy towards them because these are people protected and chosen by God and the devil. You see, you cannot survive whatever's coming if both sides are not represented. Where there's light, there is dark. These people are protected by Lilith, by the devil, by God, by source, by whatever you believe. Because they had to pay for the sins of humanity. Just remember that. That's it for me on Alan Alter's channel. I'll see you guys on the flip side.